First fight on today's Odds Breaker segment is the main event of UFC 132, a bantamweight championship title fight between Dominic Cruz, the current champion, and contender Uriah Faber. Damon, my opening lines for this fight is pick them minus 115 each way. Give me your initial thoughts on this line. Uh, you know, I think that, uh, you know, Dominic Cruz should be a slight favorite in this fight, and he's the guy I'd put my money on. I think he's so much of a different fighter than the first time he fought Faber. Uh, and, I, and I think, actually, as you know, time goes on, the odds actually may swing in Faber's favor. But if I'm putting money down in this fight, I'm putting on a champ. I think he's a top five pound for pound guy on the planet, and uh, I think this is going to be a much, much different fight than the first. Yeah, I agree. I'd say you take the first fight and definitely throw it uh, out the window because it is going to be a totally different fight. But I do see a lot of advantages with Uriah Faber. The crowd's going to be behind him. It might influence the judges a little bit. And he's, he's a great wrestler. That's going to be pretty even. I think Dominic Cruz is a great wrestler as well. I would give the submission edge, obviously, to Uriah Faber. But it is going to be a competitive fight. And I do think the public, as we get closer to fight day, you're going to see money coming on Uriah Faber. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see Uriah Faber shifting as a slight favorite and you get possibly some plus money value on Dominic Cruz. What do you think? Yeah, exactly. I think, you know, time, as time goes on there, you know, I think we're going to see more money come in on Uriah and the odds will shift a bit. And that's when I put the money down on Dominic Cruz. Okay. So today you're going to take Dominic Cruz risking 575 to win $500, correct? All right. All right. Our second fight for the odds breaker segment is another lightweight clash. Two lightweight prospects recently on their way up. It looked like they were both in title contention, but unfortunately they both suffered losses. We have a battle between Evan Dunham and George Sideropoulos. Now, a tricky fight to set odds on. I'm slightly leaning towards Evan Dunham in this fight, and he's coming out as a minus 145 favorite. Comeback plus 115 on George Sideropoulos. So close to a pick em, slight lean towards Evan Dunham. Give me your thoughts. Well, you know, this is a fight that actually surprises me just a little bit that Evan Dunham is a favorite just based on, you know, what George Sotorobles has done. But betting-wise, you know, I would put my money on Evan Dunham. I think his, you know, submissions are strong enough to get out of anything Sotorobles could put him in. I think his stand-up's a lot better. And I think size-wise, he's one of the guys that really matches up with Sotorobles. He's a very, very big lightweight. Um, so, you know, I, I may wait to see if the odds shift a little bit. You know, maybe Sotorobles somehow becomes a favorite. But I, I, I still feel like Evan Dunham's going to win this fight, and he's the money bet I put my money on. Yeah, I think Evan Dunham's more of a grinder, and I, it's going to be a pretty close fight, but I see possibly him winning a decision here again. That's why he's a slight favorite. So you are going to lay Dunham at minus 145, 725 to win 500, correct? Yeah. Okay, again, hard to argue. We're going to see where the public takes this line. I'm very interested to see where we're at, and it might be worth a, a bet at plus money odds on either one of these guys. Getting into our third fight of the night, it's a light heavyweight clash between Ryan Bader and Tito Ortiz. Now, Damon, I know you're, like I said, you're very knowledgeable of sports, so you're not going to be surprised by who the favorite in this fight is, but maybe by the line, because I'm opening up Ryan Bader at minus 280. The comeback on Tito Ortiz is going to be plus 220. What do you think? I think the odds are pretty right on the money here. I think Ryan Bader is a better version of what Tito Ortiz used to be, a very good wrestler with solid boxing and, you know, good submissions. And, uh, you know, Tito, unfortunately, has had every excuse under the sun why he hasn't won his last, you know, whatever, five, six fights. Um, you know, he's hung close in there, and I think that's the thing that would scare me about this fight being too much of a heavy favor because Tito could still somehow pull it out. But I just I can't put money on the guy. He, he unfortunately, is not a top 10 level heavy, light heavyweight anymore. Ryan Bader is. So if I'm putting my money down on this fight, I'm putting it on Ryan Bader. But this is one of those ones where, you know, in the back of my head, I always think maybe Tito could do it, but... Then again, I wouldn't definitely not put money on it. <laughs> well, yeah, it is hard to take a bet on Tito. I know the public will bet Tito at plus 220 odds. Um, he's got a lot of respect out there. And he's a fan favorite, let's face it. And he's one of my favorite all-time fighters as well. But we just have not seen that Tito Ortiz that we used to see a few years back. So hard to argue with you with that bet. So you are laying Tito or, or Ryan Bader. I'm sorry, you're laying Ryan Bader minus 280, 1,400 to win 500, correct? Yeah. Our next fight, fight four, is another lightweight clash. Again, two hot prospects right now in the UFC lightweight division, especially Melvin Guillard. He's coming in as a favorite over Sean Ray Roller, minus 200 odds. So minus 200 Melvin Guillard, plus 160 odds on Shane Roller. Give me your thoughts. You know, I think this is the one fight on the card I would put down as an absolute lock, and I would put my money completely down on Melvin Guillard. You know, the only way I feel like Shane Roller really wins this fight is if Melvin comes in under underestimating him or somehow – uh, thinking that this is not the fight he should be having, that he you know, is looking past this fight. Otherwise, I think Melvin Gillard wins this in a blowout. He's a much better stand-up fighter. He's a pretty solid wrestler. And ever since he's been with Greg Jackson, Melvin is just a much mentally, you know, much more mentally strong fighter. 
Uh, Melvin Gillard, in my opinion, should be one, maybe one or two fights away from a title shot. And unless Shane Roller somehow, you know, just does something amazing in this fight, I, I just see Melvin Gillard knocking him out. And this is this is my money bet. This is my lock. I, I agree with you. I think that Shane Roller definitely needs to take this thing to the ground. And I'm not sure if he can. You know, I mean, Melvin Gillard's takedown defense has gotten a lot better, um, and on the feet. I mean, he's potentially going to knock out Shane Roller, so he definitely needs to clinch up with him, try to get it to the ground, maybe take his back, something like that to win this fight. But that's why I'm a little cautious. I mean, it's, you know, it's a three-round fight. I doubt it goes that, the distance because we're going to either see Melvin knocking him out or if Shane wins, I think his only chance is by submission, so he might catch uh, Melvin by submission as well. That was why the line's a little bit lower, minus 200 maybe than everybody uh, would think. But I do agree with you. I think that the public is going to bet Melvin Gerard up. We might see this line go as high as 300. Um, by the time it's all said and done. So you're willing to lay minus 200 odds on Melvin Guillard. It's going to be 1,000 to win 500, correct? All right. Okay, Damon, our last fight on the docket for today's show is yet again another lightweight clash. A lot of lightweight battles, uh, great lightweight battles on this card, UFC 132. This time it's between uh, Red Hot Dennis Seaver versus Matt Wyman. Now, Dennis Seaver has been the hotter and the more popular fighter lately in the fans' perspective. I think it's going to be a very competitive fight. The odds are close, but Dennis Seaver is coming in as the favorite, minus 175. The comeback is plus 145 on Matt Wyman. Give me your thoughts. This is the fight where I would definitely bet the underdog. You know, I think Dennis Seaver had a phenomenal performance against George Sotorabolis, but throughout his UFC career, he's been somewhat hot and cold. Matt Wyman, I guess you could accuse him of the same things, but I think he's a very well-rounded fighter. And this is a fight, as far as the underdog bet goes, that I would definitely lay the money on Matt Wyman. And I think the lines may shift a little bit in this one. And, you know, Seaver becoming a bigger favorite, people betting on him simply because of the Sotoropoulos performance. And uh, once they start shifting, if you see Matt Wyman go up to like a plus 200, I, that's a huge bet I would absolutely lay down on. You know, honestly, I couldn't agree with you more. I think Matt Wyman has an outstanding shot at winning this fight. I think a lot of people are going to count him out. And he's always been one of those guys that's kind of underrated in the UFC lightweight division. And he's coming on in off of a three-fight win streak. He, he, had, he looked the best he's ever looked possibly in his last outing against Cole Miller. So I think Wyman is a live dog here. Um, but you're right. I think the public is going to bet up Dennis Seaver. We might see the line climb to 200, 250 possibly. So it, it might be a good chance to wait and uh, get some more value on Matt Wyman. But for today, you are going to take Matt Wyman plus 145. You're going to risk 500 to win 725, correct? Okay, hey, Damon Martin from MMAWeekly.com. Thanks for joining us again on today's show. It's been a pleasure having you on, dropping your knowledge. Anybody you'd like to thank or any shout-outs before we let you go? Uh, just like I said, thanks for having me on the show. Make sure you check out MMAWeekly.com for the best in uh, MMA coverage. And uh, follow me on Twitter, if you could, at Damon Martin. And check out my radio show, MMA Weekly Radio, on uh, every night at 9 o'clock Eastern. Okay, hopefully you'll join us again soon, Damon. We look forward to seeing you again. Thanks very much. Our second guest on today's MMA Odds Breaker segment, joining us once again, is John Luther from MMAFA.TV. John, welcome back to the show. Hey, thanks, Nick. Now, we just were joined by Damon Martin from MMAWeekly.com, so you got to uh, hear Damon discussing the odds, and uh, you kind of find out what the odds were from the conversation I had with Damon here. So we're basically going to briefly run down each one and get your uh, selections. You get $500 a pop, again, from BetDSI to make your wager. So I want to know your thoughts on each fight. The first fight was Dominic Cruz versus Uriah Faber. The line, as you heard from Damon and I, is minus 115. Pick them each way. Give me your thoughts on that fight. Well, my first thought on the fight is that it should be the main event, regardless of what happens with BJ Penn. This is the fight of the night right here. Uh, both guys are some of the most capable and exciting guys in the sport, and they both have name recognition, which for the 135-pound division, that's a pretty rare thing. So it should be a coming-out party for the bantamweight division. I think that Dominic Cruz, uh, you know, even though he lost to Uriah four years back, he's developed a style where it's so unique and so tricky that guys can't even get their hands on him. And uh, even though he's outmatched in the wrestling department on paper, he's all, he always finds a way to take guys down and out wrestle him. I think he's able to do the same kind of thing against Uriah Faber. Even though Faber makes it a scrappy fight, he's a team alpha male guy, um, I think Cruz walks away with either a unanimous decision or a split decision if uh, Faber gets some love on the judges' scorecards. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think Faber might get some love on the judges' scorecard. That's what worries me here a little bit because he's so popular, the fans' reaction might influence the judges. Um, but you're not uh, hesitating. That's two of our experts in a row picking Dominic Cruz over Uriah Faber. So you're laying 575 to win 500. 
Okay, the next fight we discussed was Evan Dunham versus George Sideropoulos. Now, Dunham's coming in as a favorite, minus 145. Give me your thoughts on that fight. Well, uh, this is a good fight. <laughs> it's a very, very good fight. I think both guys got exposed in their last outing. And um, uh, I think George Sideropoulos, he isn't who we thought he was. And uh, I think Evan Dunham, he's a slow starter, but he's able to pick up the pace as the fight goes on. I think he's a little bit more dangerous in the striking department, and he's a competent grappler. I think he's able to expose uh, Sadaropoulos once again, and I, I think the line's pretty good there. I, I bet the max on uh, um, uh, Evan Dunham. Okay, so you're going to lay Evan Dunham at minus 145, 725 to win 500. And again, that's two experts that are taking Evan Dunham. And this was a very tricky line for me to set, honestly. So I'm glad I went with Evan Dunham as a slight favorite because two people backed me up. We'll go on to the next fight. Um, we have Ryan Bader versus Tito Ortiz. Now, this is another one of those fights that you guys aren't going to be shocked by the favorite. We know Ryan Bader's a favorite. He's coming in at minus 280, though. Give me your thoughts. Well, my first thought is poor Tito Ortiz because he is going to get absolutely clobbered in this fight. He's going to lose via something very brutal and very violent. And, uh, uh, I mean, Ryan Bader, he's just he's younger, he's faster, he's stronger, he's a better wrestler, he's got better knockout power. It's, it's a foregone conclusion that he's going to win this fight. Uh, Tito Ortiz might come out and look good in the first round like he always does, but... Yeah, you know, you got to be honest with yourself. Even though I'd love to see Tito Ortiz go out there and punish guys like he used to or see Crow Cop go out there and knock people's heads off, you know, it's, it's just a different era in the sport. And I think Ryan Bader, um, he, you know, it's actually it's a pretty good line. I'd, I'd lay um, the max on Ryan Bader because that line should actually be a little bit higher. Okay, so you're laying 280, 1400 away 500 to win 500 on Ryan Bader. Not a lot of respect out there for Tito Ortiz anymore, and I can't blame you. He hasn't won, uh, realistically, he hasn't won a fight in like five or six years, so tough to argue with you guys both there. The next fight on the docket is Melvin Guillard versus Shane Roller. Guillard's coming in as a two to one favorite. Let me know your thoughts. Melvin, uh, Melvin Guillard is, he's quite the athlete, and he just totally rocked Evan Dunham's world. He proved himself uh, a whole lot in that fight, and I think that uh, he's going to do something very, very similar against Shane Roller. In fact, you know, I think he's taking a step back with the Shane Roller fight. Evan Dunham's much better competition. Um, and I think it's going to be a brutal knockout in the first, something similar to what we saw against uh, Evan Dunham. Uh, i got to lay the max on Melvin Gillard, and that's actually a pretty value line right there. Okay, of all the people I've talked to, nobody's given Shane Roller much of a chance. So we'll see. It looks like Melvin Giard's getting another bet here. Laying 200 on Giard, it's going to be 1000 to win $500. Then the last fight we're going to be covering today is Dennis Seaver versus Matt Wyman. Another great lightweight clash. Um, this fight, Dennis Seaver's minus 175 favorite. Give me your thoughts. Well, Dennis Seaver looked awesome against George Sadaropoulos. Again, I think George Sadaropoulos, uh, a lot of people made him out to be, you know, the next coming of jiu-jitsu, and he was going to be the next title contender. And Dennis Seaver hushed that up very, very quickly. He's got awesome kickboxing. And uh, as we saw, his takedown defense is awesome. Uh, he was stuffing him, and, and he's got a great developing ground game. Matt Wyman looked awesome against Cole Miller. I just feel like Cole Miller is not that good a competition. And it was the perfect fight to make uh, Matt Wyman look good. They're both coming off of the performances of their careers. But i got to go with Dennis Seaver in this one. So I'm picking the favorites all the way around. Got to play some max on Dennis Seaver. Okay, all faves. So you're t laying Cyber minus 175, 875 to win 500. And you are going against Damon Martin in this fight. But it is a tricky fight and not an easy line to set. John, thanks for joining us once again on MMA Oddsbreakers. Always appreciate your information. Anything you want to say or any shout-outs before we let you go? Well, uh, thanks as always for having me on, Nick. And uh, just uh, looking over these odds again that you did, you know, there are some locks on here like Ryan Bader and uh, Melvin Gillard. Uh, you can get some serious, serious value on those fights. So I'd urge people to, you know, pause the video, head on over to Bet DSI, make a bet. You know, you can thank me later. We'll be here. Uh, and, and always, uh, thanks for having me on the show. Uh, always a pleasure, John. Thanks. So we'll see you next time. John Luther from MMAFA.TV.